The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Beloved in Christ, grace and peace to you from God and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Today we continue in Matthew's successive stories of the kingdom of heaven and the end times. This gospel lesson is extremely difficult any time, let alone in a pandemic which is raging out of control let alone in a presidential election, which usually is settled once the votes are counted, but seems very unsettled in our bitterly divided country. This Sunday, of all Sundays, we need the assurance of Jesus announced in the Jesus that was announced in Matthew, the first chapter, Jesus whose name is Emmanuel, God with us. We need today another God with us text, not one more judgment text. My freshman year at Luther College, I had three big challenges. One was my dorm, the three rooms which encircled my room and my roommate's room, 
had the biggest partiers in the freshman dorm, and they partied every night till two or three o'clock in the morning. That probably wouldn't have been so difficult, except for that I had not been very wise, and considering that I was a morning person, decided that I might as well sign up for that first hour core lecture. In those days, it was Monday through Saturday. I almost died. My third challenge as a music major was my beloved classmate, Dave Wally. Dave was joy-filled, loved others, a great sense of humor. I loved him dearly, but if you can choose, you never want to follow Dave in voice lessons. He preceded me every week. When your voice lesson follows the voice lesson of a blind student, that was Dave, Dave who was blind, who memorizes his German and his French and his Italian art songs every single week and even did far behind, beyond what the assignments were. He destroys all the excuses of the one who has to follow him. Sorry, professor, I didn't have time to work on my second song, or the practice rooms were all taken, or I had too many papers to write this week, or I never get any rest if you would know about my dorm mates around me, or I have a really hard time with Italian diction nor would I ever had dared to suggest that maybe my professor should be selecting different songs for my voice, and maybe, in fact, it was partially the professor's problem if I wasn't as successful as my pre preceding voice lesson, Dave Wally. Our gospel text for today continues the saga of these kingdom of heaven, end times, parables in Matthew, two chapters before our text, Jesus is talking to the disciples in the crowd about these esteemed lay leaders. It's easy for us to forget that. These esteemed lay leaders, the Pharisees, and the scholars, that is the scribes. In this chapter, again and again and again and again and again, Jesus says to the scribes and Pharisees, woe to you. He says, the scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat, therefore do whatever they teach you and follow it. But do not do as they do, for they do not practice what they preach. Again, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees. You lock people out of the kingdom of heaven, for you do not go in yourselves, and when others are going in, you stop them. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees. You have neglected the weightier matters of the law, that is justice and mercy and faith. After all these endless woes to the scribes and the Pharisees comes chapter 24, the chapter that just precedes our lesson today. That is what we could call Matthew's parousia end time chapter with admonishment to all of us. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. Then Jesus says in this chapter 25 that contains our text for today, he begins with last Sunday's text, the ten bridesmaids, five foolish and five wise. I always identify with the ones who run out of gas for their car, I mean oil in their lamps. The kingdom of heaven Jesus then goes on with our story for today. The kingdom of heaven is like the man who before leaving on a long journey summons his slaves 
and entrust his property to them. He entrusts to, the, to one five talents. That's equal to 75 years of salary of a laborer. That would be about a million dollars. And to the other two talents, that'd be about 400,000. The brilliant Anglican scholar N.T. Wright reminds us that for people in that day, for those in Judaism of Jesus' day, they would hear this text as a story of God and Israel. The scribes and the Pharisees had been given the Torah, that is the law, that is the covenant, and the temple as a sign of God's presence with them. These promises were given to Israel for the sake of the whole world. They had buried them instead and kept them for themselves. In the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew, Jesus brings back that dream, that vision that God had for God's people. And he says in the Sermon on the Mount, you are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Painfully, the emphasis of today's parable is not the two servants who do it right. It is the unfaithful servant, the one who does not trust the master. He gives no indication in this story that he loves his master or trusts him. In fact, he blames his master. He takes no responsibility for burying the master's money entrusted to him. Clearly, he neither knows nor loves his, the master. He basically says, uh, you are the problem, master, not me. I knew you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. Master, it's your fault. You made me afraid. That is why I buried your money. The master did not respond saying, you are right. I mean, and I take what is not mine. Nor does the master agree with the third servant that he was afraid of the master. The master's response is this, you wicked and lazy slave. We can't hear that without remembering those woes to the scribes and Pharisee all the way through chapter 23, just two chapters before. Jesus' response again and again, woe to you. You lock people out of the kingdom of heaven and you do not go in yourselves. And when others try to go, you stop them. To the foolish bridesmaids in last Sunday's text and to this third slave, the truth is, you have failed. You have failed to respond to the out of control, extravagant, reckless generosity of the master. I know, Matthew has a lot of judgment, eight times at least in his gospel, but we are called today to remember a deeper truth. Even as we often fail God. We have in Jesus one who intimately knows us, who took our flesh, who immediately after our text today eats his last Passover with the disciples and goes to his final journey to the cross for you and for the whole world. When the master speaks, 
of when the master speaks of throwing the third slave that will be thrown into the darkness outside where people weep and gnash their teeth. We remember that Jesus was on the way to that darkness, on the way to the cross, where he would be abandoned, even by God. This is the Jesus who says in Matthew, I have come for the sick, not the well. The well have no need of a physician. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. This is the Jesus who reminds me, I have, and reminds us, I have come to save you. You have already died. You have already died with me in the waters of baptism. You are a new creation. You are, by my extravagant grace, the light of the world. You are called to act with love, justice, mercy, and forgiveness. I shine through you. Amen.